Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm joined with this, the G80 Generation M3. And seeing as I've got this for a little while, I thought it'd make a perfect excuse to get up early and go for a drive. Now a big thank you goes to Partridge BMW for lending me this car for a little while and to have what is going to be my first experience really behind the wheel of an M3 regardless of generation. But having said that, I believe personally that the M3 is without a doubt one of BMW's most iconic and reputable models. Now in its sixth iteration with the G80. But when it was released, people were far from impressed. Now, I'm sure that you don't need yet another YouTuber or car journalist making an unnecessarily negative point about the front grills on the G80. But without seeming biased, I genuinely don't mind them. I think that as a whole, the design language and whole kind of vibe with the G80 is all very sharp and very aggressive. And I feel that if maybe these grills were maybe a little bit more rounded or maybe didn't exist at all, it wouldn't do the car that much justice. And besides, so-called bizarre front grills on BMWs have always been quite a big part of their design language, especially on the E30 M3. But regardless, like I mentioned, the G80 M3 is the sixth generation of M3, following on from, like I said, the E30, the E36, the E46, the E92, and most recently, the F80. This particular car, as you can see, is finished in the stunning Isle of Man green, arguably one of the best colors for this car and definitely a popular option, that is for sure. We've also got the staggered setup on the diamond cut multi-spoke forged alloys. We've got 19 inch wheels on the front and 20s on the back. Now the interior is far from awful either, optioned in this case with the bicolor Silverstone leather interior with the all important carbon bucket seats. These things are an absolute work of art. They look insanely uncomfortable, but they're not. They're really, really comfortable and they just so happen to look pretty epic as well. As well as that in the interior, we obviously have the updated BMW infotainment system along with an assortment of carbon fiber options. But anyway, this video is all about the driving experience of the G80 M3. So I think without further hesitation, let's hop on board properly this time and go take this thing for a good old spin. Now, even though I've never driven properly an M3, I have experienced a G80 before. Now, actually, a couple of months ago, um, alongside Partridge BMW, I made a video on behalf of them um, featuring none other than Mr. Steve Soper. Uh, so basically, I filmed uh, for them a video uh, of Steve driving, not this exact car, but a G80 uh, M3. So I have experienced them. And so ever since I've been dying to get behind the wheel, which is of course what we're doing today. <laughs> so M3 competition. In this car, you get 510 brake horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque, and a 0 to 60 time of just under four seconds, 3.9 to be exact. Now, comparing those figures with the standard, standard non-competition pack M3, you'd be looking at a decrease of 30 horsepower and a decrease of 100 newton meters of torque. Although, for me, the big selling point with the non-competition pack is it comes with the six-speed manual. Now this being the competition pack is of course 
fitted with the lightning quick eight speed semi-auto box, which for straight line speed is definitely the way to go. But I can't help but imagine what this would be like with a manual gearbox. That would be unbelievable. A little bit less power, but just so much more drivability. <laughs> it's absolutely rapid, absolutely rapid. Now obviously, those of you who are familiar with my content, you'll know that I'm generally a bit of a hot hatch guy, kind of sticking with the, just the little small hatchbacks which pack a punch. Uh, but this is actually, for me, quite a big car. It's really wide. Those rear arches are ginormous. In fact, if you look kind of directly down the side of the car, you just get an idea about how abrupt the arches are. Yeah, they look really, really cool, uh, along with at the back, the 20 inch uh, wheels as well. The M3s of the modern day have always had really wide arches and definitely the G80 is no exception to that. But all things considered, when you're in here, it doesn't feel like a massive car. Yes, you do have those arches uh, taking up a large proportion of your rear view mirrors, but it kind of shrinks around you really. And when you look at the car from the outside, yes, it is a big car, it is quite long. But as a first impression, it doesn't feel intimidating, which to be honest, when you say that you've got a 500 horsepower plus saloon car, it does sound <laughs> quite intimidating, especially when you say that it's rear wheel drive and on cup twos, which are probably a little bit cold. <laughs> now, I'm currently on my way to my usual road, which I tend to, to film the special cars on. It's a lovely road. I absolutely love it. And actually really cool to compare different cars on it. So we're going to see what it's like when we get over there, which I'm very, very much so looking forward to. Whilst on route though, I thought it would be an interesting uh, part of the video actually to compare it to what this replaced, the infamous F80 M3, which is definitely of the modern era at least, a fan favorite. Actually come to think of it, to this day, I have not experienced an F80 M3. I've been in some of the M4s, um, none of which for the channel of course, but um, yeah, never an F80, so maybe that needs to change, but I'm getting a little bit off topic. What are we looking at power-wise in the F80 compared to the G80? Comparing both cars in their competition spec, so basically the range toppers uh, of both generations, you're looking at 450 horsepower in the F80, which is 60 horsepower less than this car, uh, 550 newton meters of torque, which is 100 newton meters less than the G80 in its competition variant, but the same as the non-competition derivative of this car. It's definitely worth noting that both cars have a three liter twin turbo in line six. You of course have the S55 in the F80 and the S58 in the G80. However, the one spec which really uh, surprised me when I found out was actually the curb weight between the two. Now, yes, both cars are pretty heavy. They're big cars at the end of the day compared to what I'm used to at least. Um, so they're not gonna be light, that's for sure. But just the difference in curb weight was really rather surprising. The G80 is the heavier of the two cars, but by quite a margin, 170 kilograms in it. So we've got 1,730 kilogram curb weight in the G80, but 1,560 kilograms in the F80. Now, to be honest, it would be really helpful for this video if I had actually driven an F80, which I haven't. But for anyone who's driven both, by all means, let me know down in the comments how do they compare. Maybe it's a video which I can do in the future. Um, obviously not today because I am F80-less. I am immersed in the G80 and the G80 only. shift lights that you get on the dash. You're probably not going to be able to see them, but they look mega and also on the head-up display as well. I mean, all in all, the interior of this car is absolutely stunning, I will admit. Like I said, 
it doesn't feel like a big car <laughs> you don't get in it and think oh okay this is a bit of a going to be a bit of a handful which yes it is in the wrong scenarios but having only had probably about an hour or two seat time in the car I feel like I know it like the back of my hand and that's a good thing trust me that is a good good thing it makes these cars so relatable for so many people and so drivable as well Well, I can safely say that it was worth the early start this morning. This thing is so much fun around these kind of countryside roads, which really surprised me. Like I said, when we were out driving the car, for such a, well, for me, for such a big car, it really did shock me. It, you, it really shrinks around you. It doesn't feel intimidating or just massive, uh, even though from the outside, it looks exactly that. And actually, before we do wrap up the video, I do need to give you guys a bit of an in-depth walk around uh, with some of my favorite aspects of the car, to be honest, the rear end, one of my favorites. I love how the factory exhausts look like a modified exhaust. It's massive. Look at the size of the tips, huge. Um, and we'll also have a look in the interior as well, because that's pretty stunning as well. But all in all, absolutely loved my experience driving this thing. Um, yeah, epic, epic car. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this car is finished in the gorgeous Isle of Man green, a really, well, quite deep, but quite light shade of metallic green. It really changes depending on what light it is. And seeing as this car is so angular, you get that depth between the lights and the darks. And a perfect example is actually on the bonnet where you have these two, I don't know what to call them, nostrils maybe? Kind of indentations in the bonnet and you really get some more clarity of the difference of how the color changes. Um, up front, you do of course have those kidney grills. Some hate them, some love them. I'm personally actually a fan to be honest. I think that, like I said earlier on, like th this car is so aggressive. I mean, those nostrils are a perfect example. All around the car, there are aggressive styling cues and I feel that this car is gonna make this justice more than any other car, personally. But anyway, this car is specced to the high heavens with numerous different packs which are on the car, some of which are actually related to the interior, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but one of which I really want to focus on is the M carbon pack. Now basically what that is, is a whole host of carbon fiber extras. You have these lovely intake surrounds up front. Um, you actually have a full carbon fiber roof, which looks absolutely stunning. You then have, of course, the uh, carbon fiber mirror covers. And then on the rear end, you have the carbon fiber lip spoiler. And of course, that lovely diffuser as well, housing those massive four exhaust tips, like I mentioned. They are absolutely massive for a stock exhaust system. Now, of course, the G80 M3 is, of course, a saloon. So we have four doors on this. Uh, the G82 M4 uh, is, of course, the coupe. That's normally what they do nowadays. The M4s are the two doors and the M3s are the four doors. Um, down the side, we have the 826 M wheels. These are forged wheels with a staggered setup, actually. So you've got 19 inch on the front and 20s on the back. You can option carbon ceramics on these, by the way, um, but these are not fitted on this specific car. And then, of course, at the back of the car, you have this lovely diffuser, like I mentioned, finished in carbon with the carbon pack. Um, it almost looks like an aftermarket diffuser from factory. It is very, very nice indeed, and it's nice that the exhaust tips kind of aren't lost in the diffuser. They are definitely very, very pronounced indeed, and that is the carbon lip spoiler, which I mentioned as well. Anyway, Lots to talk about the interior, so uh, yeah, let's go over there. Now, as I'm sure you'll agree, the interior on the G80 M3 is nothing short of stunning, that is for sure, especially with how this car is specced. I really like um, the contrast between the green and the Silverstone leather interior. But anyway, like I mentioned, there was so much going on in here. Um, it's a really, really nice place to be actually, really very nice indeed. I'm gonna start off with the thing which you notice first <laughs> when you're sat in here, and that is the M1 and M2 buttons. That is a very uh, modern day M car trait uh, to be finished in red as well. And that's basically your two configurable modes, um, basically like a, a, a shortcut basically, rather than going through all of the different buttons and modes in the center console. Whilst we're here actually, well, let's speak about this. We've got the iDrive controls in the middle. I think I don't need to say anything about that because the iDrive is 
it's just the most commonly known thing in the world. Uh, we have the engine start button here. That is actually something which I'm struggling to get used to. I keep on finding myself kind of going up here. I think that's just a 140 thing. And also down here, you have the usual things like your gear stick, your handbrake, and all the different buttons like traction control, your parking sensors, and the exhaust button, which I might add is permanently on. Good. As well, on the steering wheel, we have a nice chunky steering wheel here. This car is actually, uh, like I said, quite highly spec. We've got a heated steering wheel, heated seats, uh, and a whole load of other good stuff as well. But on the steering wheel, if you have all the usual buttons which you might expect to see, cruise control, limiter, uh, volume buttons for the radio and things like that. But behind them, we have these lovely, lovely extended carbon paddles. Again, I really like how the manufacturers now uh, kind of making their shift paddles more pronounced because in the aftermarket it's so common for people to put extensions on to make them more pronounced and to make them actually look uh, good <laughs> for a change so it's nice that these are now uh, coming back from factory looking very nice and behind them you have like a rubberized uh, coating on them almost so they're not slippery at all. Uh, in front of you you have your digital dash, very very uh, similar setup to what you'd find in most of the other uh, cars in the BMW range. Of course being fully digital you can change it and configure it how you like um, but as you'd expect it does all that you need to do and does look very cool as well. In the center then you have your usual uh, infotainment screen uh, as you'd expect very responsive and very easy to use. You can flick through the menus as you please. It is of course compatible with both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. That's an issue, isn't it? And it's also got voice recognition. <laughs> Below that, you have your climate control panel, uh, which again is very easy to use. You can also uh, control it on the touchscreen there. And apart from that, it's just your usual stuff. Ah, no, it's not. The seats. These are absolutely stunning. I think I might get my toolkit out and see if I can fit them in my 140 because these are absolutely stunning. And yes, you can opt them with comfort seats. Um, if you're gonna buy one of these to be a bit of a, a tourer, then absolutely fine. They'll do exactly what you need to do. But to be honest, these aren't uncomfortable at all. And having the carbon backs as well, whoever's in the back uh, has a nice view as well. So that then is going to wrap things up for me today with the G80 M3, an absolute brute and so much fun on these country roads, which I've brought it to today. As always, a big thank you to Partridge BMW for the continuous support and for trusting me with some of their cars. You can find all of their details down in the description down below. But for me today, that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come.